India became the world's first nation to reach the South Pole of the Moon on August 23rd. India is now on the moon. People are applauding. Mission control erupted in cheers as the Chandrayaan-3 landed in a part of the moon where no country has ever landed before. For India, it's a matter of national pride. It happened just three days after a similar mission from Russia failed. It's a blow to the Kremlin because they are trying to show through this mission that Russia is again a superpower. The lunar South Pole is significant because the expected presence of ice could support future human settlements. Here's why Moscow and New Delhi were in a race to get there and how their missions were not just about science, but also about politics. India's Chandrayaan-3, which means moon vehicle in Sanskrit, blasted off from Earth on July 14th. Lift off normal. Since then, the spacecraft made several maneuvers around the Earth and has been orbiting the moon to prepare for a landing. Russia launched its Luna 25 less than a month later. It took a much faster and more direct route to the moon and was projected to reach the surface first on August 21st. The South Pole is strategic because the expected presence of ice could provide fuel, oxygen and drinking water, making it a potential site for mining and human settlements. But experts say a smooth landing is extremely challenging. That's because the area has much tougher terrain compared to other parts of the moon. It is bumpy, littered with craters and has limited sunlight. The lander module has begun its descent. India tried but failed to reach there four years ago and finally succeeded on August 23rd. This success belongs to all of humanity and it will help moon missions by other countries in the future. That makes India the fourth country in the world to reach the moon after the United States, Russia and China. India is expected to get a lot of offers from other space agencies, foreign countries to launch like commercial satellites for them, which is going to be also a revenue earner for India. A happy landing for Russia's unmanned Luna 17 spacecraft. Russia was the first country to send a rover to the moon back in 1970, towards the end of a space race between the US and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. But Russia hasn't launched another lunar lander since the 1970s, and the stakes this time around were especially high, more than 18 months after it launched the invasion of Ukraine. Connectors. Western sanctions imposed on Russia since the war complicated its collaborations in space with Europe and the US. Because of Western sanctions, a lot of the cooperation that used to take part um, in terms of space projects, they have come to an end. And also because of technology export bans, Russia cannot receive a lot of the electronics and other technology that it would have in the past from European nations that supported its space program. So this is extremely significant. For India, there are political and financial reasons driving its mission to the lunar South Pole. The successful mission could boost Prime Minister Narendra Modi's election campaign early next year. These kind of missions adds to the national pride. Prime Minister Modi is going to tell his voters how the country has reached the moon, which would make to his benefit. The Indian Space Agency works on a shoestring budget. In February, the government slashed funding for the Department of Space by 8% to $1.5 billion. In comparison, NASA's budget for 2023 is more than $25 billion. India is hoping to get a lot of foreign collaborations in terms of like offers for joint venture missions to launch commercial satellites. So it relies on these foreign collaborations to support its space missions. <laughs> India's successful landing on the lunar South Pole could change its standing in the global space race, especially in Asia. India's position as a global space power would definitely be reinforced. Definitely puts India ahead of countries like Japan and Korea and just behind China. Meanwhile, Russia still has a way to go to catch up with the US and China. 
it's not the be all and end all for Russia. There are other lunars, Luna 26 and Luna 27. They both depend on electronics from the West. And for as long as sanctions continue, it's going to be difficult for Russia to obtain the kind of technology that it needs to continue collaborating and to ensuring that it is number one as it wants to be in the space race. Mm -hmm.